A true swashbuckler should always fight with a sense of panache and style. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire, bringing you the next step in the first edition Pathfinder Swashbuckler Guide. And today we're talking about panache and deeds. Uh, joining me today, you may hear them in the background, are journeyman storyteller and initiate to the seventh circle of lore, Nora. Also, we have learning, learning initiate storyteller and uninitiated to any circles of lore, Atticus. Both are adorable, both know how to work their charms, but uh, they are bouncing around in the background so you may hear them or even see them at some point. But today we are covering the swashbucklers Panache and Deeds. Panache is the pool from which you work to activate your deeds, and the deeds give you a wide array of abilities that you're able to unlock as you advance in level. Now to begin with, for Panache, this kicks in at first level for you, and your maximum panache is equal to your charisma modifier, and you gain max panache each day. You use your panache points to activate your deeds, and you regain panache points by scoring critical hits or delivering the killing blow to an opponent, just as a suave, daring swashbuckler ought to do. But... What deeds do we want to activate and utilize regularly? You get access to all of them as you level, but not all deeds are created equal, at least not mechanically. Bear in mind that these are just suggestions. This is a mechanical, mathematical-ish kind of breakdown on what is going to be most effective for your builds, for your characters. It's just meant to help you learn what will be mechanically useful so your character is viable. But if you find something that just fits for your character that's not necessarily the most mechanically effective but it suits their personality their story whatever the case may be go with that first now with that addendum uh, uh with that little aside out of the way let's move on to the actual deeds first off we have opportune parry and repost kicks in at first level and you spend a panache when an opponent at attacks you to make an attack of opportunity against them. You take a minus two penalty for each size category larger the opponent is. So if you're a medium sized character and you use this against a large size opponent, you're taking a minus two penalty. If the swashbuckler rolls higher than the opponent, the attack misses and the swashbuckler may take an immediate action to attack the target if they have one panache point. Uh, remaining so this is really really good uh, this is great if you know you're if that's going to be a heavy hit coming in say your first level and you're facing down an ogre that's gonna hurt a lot if it's hitting you with say a great club in two hands that's going to deal an incredible amount of damage but you use this roll well enough you make the miss and if you have one more panache point in reserve which you should you can then take that immediate action to attack them again uh, basically it's like an attack of opportunity for you so definitely very useful to have for your defense and for your offense great to have and then at third level we get precise strike you need one panache point in your pool so you don't have to actually spend anything for this to work you add your swashbuckler level to damage when you use light or one-handed piercing melee weapons. You can't attack with an offhand weapon or use a shield aside from a buckler. This can be used with a thrown one-handed weapon, and you can use one point of panache to double the bonus damage, so you can uh, spend a panache point to double it here. This is precision damage and is not increased by critical hits. Uh, same idea with uh, sneak attack. So this will help to increase your offensive potential. This just adds a flat bonus to your damage. It's unfortunate that it's not multiplied by critical hits, but really that makes sense. Because at this point, by the time you start using this at third level, you're adding three points of damage, as long as you're just using a weapon in your main hand. And this, at least to me, from a martial arts and historical perspective, the offhand weapon that you typically see swashbucklers using is usually something like a dagger, typically a parrying dagger, which is also called for some reason a sword breaker. That was used defensively. You could attack with it if opportunity arose, but mainly it was there to keep you covered while you stabbed and thrust with the rapier. 
And the same idea with the buckler. Bucklers are much more effective than you might think at protecting yourself, because just even having that added barrier in the way lets you work around it and keep yourself closed off from angles of attack. So very, very useful, but again, more defense oriented. It's meant to help you close off angles of attack, trap or at least distract or slow your opponent's weapon just long enough for you to get in that critical stab and end the fight. So thematically appropriate, mechanically effective, this is definitely one you want to grab. And then at 7th level, we want, definitely want to make use of Targeted Strike. It's a full round action and you use one panache point to make an attack with a light or one-handed piercing weapon. We can polish your nails in a little bit, my dear, not a problem. So you use uh, a one-handed piercing weapon to cripple the target. Targets that are immune to sneak attacks or other precision damage are immune to targeted strikes. You can choose from the following. If you target their arms, the target drops the item they're holding. If you target their head, the target will be confused for one round. This is a mind-affecting effect. If you target their legs, the target will be knocked prone. Creatures with four or more legs are immune to this. If you target their torso or wings, if they have them, the target will be staggered for one round. So this gives you quite a bit of combat utility. The only unfortunate thing is that it takes a full round action, but since you're working with the team, if you're uh, using this to disrupt your opponent, uh, this will go very, very far for you and also helps to free up your options when selecting feats because you using this you don't necessarily need to have improved disarm or anything like that because you can just use targeted strike to force the target to drop the item that they that they're holding if you hit their arms so definitely great to have because of the range of utility in combat that it provides for you and then coming in at 11th level we have evasive you need one panache point in your pool, meaning you don't need to spend anything. You gain the benefits of evasion, uncanny dodge, and improved uncanny dodge. And your swashbuckler levels count as rogue levels for improved uncanny dodge, which deals with flanking. So essentially, you cannot be flanked except for by rogues of level, level 4 or higher. So this is massively useful, especially since we're such a high dexterity kind of build with a great reflex save. This will help your survivability against a p enemy wizards or casters, and enemy casters love to throw those blasting spells that require you to make reflex saves. So, definitely ha- well, you're def you'll be using this almost by default, but definitely one you want to keep in mind. Then we have Dizzying Defense at 15th level. You use one panache point, and when using a light one-handed melee weapon, uh, light or one-handed melee weapon, pardon me, a weapon to fight defensively as a swift action. You reduce the attack penalty for fighting defensively to minus two, and you gain a plus four dodge bonus to your AC. So this is for those moments where you really need to hunker down, cover yourself, and are working more to parry and dodge and block rather than just outright reposting and attacking your opponents. This is great to have. You need that survivability because we are working with lighter armor as a swashbuckler. And then at 19th level, we have Cheat Death. You spend all your remaining panache points when your hit points are reduced to zero. You instead will drop to one hit point. Effects that kill you outright without hit point damage are not negated by this ability. So if somebody uses Power Word Kill, or if they you hit you with Disintegrate and you fail your Fortitude save, uh, it's just all, all automatic death effects will kill you if you succeed on your fortitude save but the damage dealt by disintegrate still reduces you to zero then you can use cheat death to keep one hit point there and i don't think i need to explain to you why that's useful having that one extra hit point though you are damn near to death you're right on death's door this gives you an opportunity if you have the handy haversack handy on or <laughs> If you have the handy haversack on you and you have a potion, you can gulp one down real quick, back out of a fight without worrying about attacks of opportunity, get a few more hit points on board, or get in that last desperate dramatic strike to give that final middle finger to the opponent and dr hopefully, if not drop them, at least have that epic moment where you roar out in defiance and just stab them in the face. But 
these are just some of the panache or well some of the deeds that you can ha have and make use of using your panache certainly there are more available did do you feel that i missed my mark today or have i pretty well covered a lot of the more effective options let me know in the comments down below what you think and of course if you did enjoy today's video hit the like button or you know for that matter even if you didn't hit dislike and don't forget if you haven't already go on down there and hit the subscribe button so that way you get notified the next time i upload more content here to the channel but for now i've been your host jordan your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire thank you so much for your time and you all have yourselves a good night